Hello and welcome to Dip Into The Ink, the show where me and sometimes a guest go in depth into a comic book page by page. And today we're all by our lonesome. All my friends are busy being successful, attractive, young entrepreneurs. But I took busy time out of my day to talk to you about comics. So you're welcome. Now, the lots of stuff have been coming out recently, uh, most notably... Uh, some indie stuff, some Teen Titan stuff I want to go into. But I picked this, I looked at this, and I was when I was picking it up, I was like, this is so interesting. And it's a new event by Marvel. It is called Blood Hunt. It's this mini event, one of five. There are dozens of tie-ins. It is sort of being helmed by Jed McKay, Pepe Larraz, and Marte Garcia. It seems really interesting, so I thought that you and I could go through it page by page, and we could just talk about it. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, first things first, we have our cover, Jen McKay, Pepe Larraz, Martha Garcia, Blood Hunt 105 by Marvel. We It seems like an Avengers-esque event, Avengers-centric-esque event. We have the current lineup with Sam Wilson Cap, um, Carol Danvers, T'Challa, Wanda, Tony. I like how I'm naming them like they're my friends. <laughs> you have Captain America, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, Scarlet Witch, Iron Man, Vision, Thor, and I believe in the back, Tigra... Not Moon Knight, because I think he's dead. I don't know what's going on. Moon Moon Person and uh, Doctor Strange. But we'll get character introductions in a moment. And then you have Blade, like his face. You can know that's Blade because you can, like those sunglasses he wears, iconic. They're iconic no matter where you take them. Uh, so yeah, you can see Blade in the shadows there. And that's our cover. Very excited because I love Pepe Larraz's art. So let's get to it. Sun Death. And we see a villain fighting and they're shooting out some sort of black energy and uh, we see ev lots of different people fighting. The only ones I uh, just around the world, Sun Death, and it's different timestamps of something happening to these people. The only ones I truly recognize in this sort of page are Dark Star, who I think is an X Men character, and Cloak. I love Cloak and Dagger. Uh, you see Cloak kind of going back, like, oh, and then Dagger's like reaching out, like, no. Uh, I love them. They're my favorite, like, C list characters. Uh, Marvel, hire me <laughs> to write them. <laughs> But uh, that's my shameless plug. I think they're really interesting. I think their powers are unique. The fact that they've been able to switch them in the past is super cool. But uh, yeah, everyone's falling down and it's called Sun Death. And suddenly uh, there's this huge page of the planet and these dark spirals. as this dark energy. And at the bottom, we get our first bit of narration. This is how the world ends. This is my work. This has always been my work. And after so very long, I will complete it. Ooh, ooh, like what's going on here? Art amazing, the earth and the dark shadow taking it over. It looks pretty cool. It a little bit reminds me of the Null and the Venom War thing that was happening that I thought was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that event, but this is slightly reminiscent of it. But we go to the next page where it is Sun Death 1526, which is the sun dies, so it counts down now, it's going back up. And uh, Iron Man to Scarlet Witch, I'm in the air and it's looking bad. What are you seeing on the ground? And Scarlet Witch, Wanda, she's kind of floating down as police try to push back a crowd. And she goes, Marcus Daniels, better known as Blackout, or at least he was. And then he, this guy, he was robbing a bank. You see dark energy just pouring out of him, like almost like a hose is being unleashed and the water has no gravity. So it's like flying into the air and the art here, spectacular, love it. Uh, but yeah, you can only see this person's legs and then it, it's like the person exploded. It's insane. But we go to the next page where Iron Man is flying around and he's just like, I'm getting similar reports around the world. Superhumans, all dark star, dusk, silhouette, cloak, all dark force users. They become portals to the dark force dimension. And Tony's like, can you close them with your magic? And she's like, yeah, I'll do that. And after that, I'll punch Galactus. And he's like, all right, all right. You don't need to get snippy with me. I get it. Uh, but he was just hoping she could kind of magic it away. But Tony's flying around and he sees these pill these people that exploded. There's these dark pillars spiraling into the atmosphere, creating this sort of dark force layer that's really cool and is blocking out the sun, which is bad. <laughs> but we go to the next page, Sun Death 25, where we have um Tigra and the moon person. I really don't know who this is, but I know Jed McKay's writing this. And I know he did some Moon Knight, I believe. 
I but I I didn't read it, but I've 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 heard pretty good things about it. So uh, f- feel free to check it out if you want. But I recognize Tigra. She's iconic, even though I know nothing about her. But uh, she's reading reports that all across the city, all across the world. And this moon guy is like, this isn't a mishap. This isn't an accident. And they hear a noise and they both dramatically turn as a bunch of vampire spawns like jump out. Ah, like these are very the nose for ought to claws pointed ear bold head they're like rushing out ah and a uh, moon person goes it's an attack and tiger responds vampires and we get our first uh two-page spread here where it says marvel comics presents blood hunt um writer jed mckay artist pepe laraz color artist marta garcia letter of vic cory petit and then it has a bunch of cover artists design jay bowen as editors martin brio assistant Associate editor Annalise Bria, Tom Brevert, editor and editor in chief CB Jabolski. I don't normally name all of those, but I thought since it's just you and me, I'll do it. But we have all that together. It's this big panel, a big page, white with bold red letters with some sort of image swirling in the back that says Blood Hunt number one. And here we go. This is going to help me a lot. Key players, the Avengers, Scarlet Witch, Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, Black Panther, Vision, Captain, uh, uh, Captain Marvel. I would say right now, Jed McKay's Avengers is really fun. Uh, I haven't picked up a Avengers book since all new, all different Avengers, which had Kamala and Sam Wilson Nova and Spider Man on it. That was it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that book. I thought that dynamics were interesting, and I wish I had run a little bit longer, just because I never feel like we got the chance to really explore that dynamic to its fullest. But I haven't picked up an Avengers book since then. So I'm excited to pick up one now and kind of see how these goes. Uh, another sect, the Midnight Mission, which is Hunter's Moon. That's the moon character I keep ignoring. <laughs> and Tigra. And then we have uh, space for, I guess, uh, adjunct characters. We have Spider-Man, Blade, Doctor Strange, Clea, and Doctor Doom, which is interesting. Doom being involved in anything automatically piques my interest because I'm thinking, you're such a big, important person. If you're here, then some shit's going on. But we go to the next page. Milan, Italy, sun death, 3451. 34 minutes in, and you see a bunch of vampires attacking and people being infected. We cut to Lagos, Nigeria, sun death, 40. People are being attacked. Calgary, Canada. Uh, just more images. Uh, Taijin, China. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, Colombia, South Korea, and all uh, vampires are attacking everywhere. And... Uh, we go to Latveria and people are running like, we can't cross paths. And then as the vampires try to enter Latveria, of course, they're set on fire. And he's, and there's a shot of Doom looking so cool. He looks cool whenever he shows up anywhere. Whenever he shows up anywhere, he just, he steals the page. He steals his panels. And he says, uh, excellent, Latveria's borders are secure. Now ensure that Doom's new subjects are attended to. After all, loyalty stems naturally from gratitude. Like, of course, he's going to save people so that they can become members of Latveria. And that's how he gets his people. He just saves them and treats them well, as best as, well, that's depending on the story. But yeah, next page, Brooklyn, United States, exactly one hour since sun death. And we have Miles Morales, a.k.a. Spider-Man. He's fighting a bunch of vampires. And if you don't know, uh, I believe Cody Ziegler is doing Spider-Man. It looks really cool. It looks very anime inspired. Miles, as you know, has this sort of venom sting thing i forget if that's what it's called i'm such a fake fan venom sting where it's like this sort of static electricity where he can like zap people and it shocks him but he's been playing in the recent book he's been playing around with it and expanding it to this sort of physical form so he's made like a broad sword which is uh you know he's a huge uh nerd like i know he plays world of warcraft i know he's probably for the horde i already know miles <laughs> So he's probably, he may has like this great sword, not a great sword, but he has like a broad sword and he's stabbing, ksah, and he's like, okay, okay, vampire is right. What would Blade do? And then Blade appears. He's like, that is a good question, isn't it? Things are looking bad, Spider-Man, but I've got a plan. And it's not just down to what I do. I've got something I need you to do. And Blade always looking cool. I think I saw on Twitter, Pepe Larraz was excited because this was his first time ever drawing Blade and it looks good. He does a good job. Everyone looks great in this book. But uh, yeah, seeing Blade is automatically a bit of a comfort because you're like, oh, okay, we got the vampire person involved in the vampire event. Okay, he can handle this. And that's what I thought when I first read this. 
But we go to the next page, Sun Death 1, and it's more people fighting, and you see Thor is fighting some vampires. He's like, whence have these vampires come? What did we miss? You see Carol blasting, and she's like, who's doing this? Who are we fighting? And you see T'Challa going, I don't know. And he's also blasting some people. We cut to Vision and the rest of the Avengers, and they're just like, "This doesn't this feel like Dracula? What's happening? Who's attacking? And then, uh, maybe it's not. And then Wanda's like, who is it? Pri and then they all get a priority alert. And it's Blade, and he's driving this big uh, transportation truck with a big carrier on the back. And he's like, I'm on the run, and I have information. We need to meet. Lock onto the coordinates and teleport this rig up to the Impossible City. Meet me there. Blade out. And now, if you're not up to date with current Avengers comics, the Avengers fought some bad guys. And uh, they, these bad guys were using this giant floating city as their base. It used to be a base filled with heroes, but the bad guys took it over. I'm, I'm speed. You should really read it if you have the chance. It's really, it's a fun time. But uh, they freed the Impossible City, and now this sentient city is sort of on their side. It's it's a kind of akin to Krakoa in a way, uh, the Living Island. I said that without thinking, and now I made myself sad because I really enjoyed Krakoa. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this big possible city, they all get teleported up and the Avengers teleport in and they're talking about, we need to make this quick. Uh, uh, we need to figure it out. And then Blade, him and his rig, <laughs> they're teleported in and they're just like, Blade, what's going on? And then suddenly all the Avengers, oh, they, they collapse their heads and they fall to the ground and we hear a voice off panel. That go, uh, some writing that says, The Daywalker couldn't make it, but thank you for inviting us in, Avengers. And then here we go. Uh, <laughs> we get some of the gnarliest looking dudes. I know Pepper Lorez is cooking with some. I don't know what. He got some cardamom. He got some paprika. He's, he's, he made something spicy because these fucking, these designs are a lot of fun. There's these horror creatures. You see this tall guy with this strange, bony muscular muscularity with almost sort of these horns in making like a u shape he goes my warriors have been waiting for this miragrim maintain the psychic static cruel and unusual take the witch first damascene the thunder god smoke eater on me and we see a bunch of villains and we have one that is wearing sort of like a vampire as cloak uh, we have one that has these big, like, hands that it looks like he's going to slash you up. Another one that looks like they're made of barbed wire just spinning and flowing into the shape of a human. Another person that looks like a kaleidoscope got all slippery and they're, like, moving. And then another one that's kind of floating that's a little Scarlet Witch-esque and has this crown around their head and, like, energy projecting. And we begin the fight as a smoke eater turns into, like, this big multi- uh, armed thing and starts attacking them and then the kaleidoscope person is like oh hello we're a lot to like aren't we and he attacks scarlet witch the claw person starts cutting thor and you know it's business because he can actually cut thor it takes a lot to pierce that Asgardian guardian skin so he slashes him ah and thor's like ha huh, you cut me and then <laughs> there's, there's some fun team-ups where everyone is fighting you see how powerful they are and even iron man starts shooting and they st everyone starts going down and it is a really in enjoyable event. And I really in appreciate this because if you want to give your villains gravitas, especially villains you've never heard of or haven't really built up too much in the s public sphere of comics, you need to do something dramatic to show that they mean business. And them attacking and frankly kicking the asses of the Avengers is a really effective way to do that. And, you know, in this book, the Avengers do get their asses kicked. But I think one of the mantras is like, we're an Avenger. We get back up, which is a fun thing. But everyone is knocked down. You kind of get an exploration of everyone's, uh, these enemies' powers. And then this bone guy. I forget everyone's names. I'm sorry. You see he's fighting Sam, and they're like, oh, And he's like, ah, Captain America, you I particularly want. You'll be a fine prize for the master when I turn you. You'll be our symbol then, and your species will weep. Which is very interesting because they, none of them are the master. They're all just working together. Which is just leaving the question, who's the master? But uh, they keep on fighting. They're, they're tussling down. And there's a very, it's very dramatic. The Avengers are getting their asses kicked. 
and you see Thor, he has some spikes in his arm and his fore and his leg and thigh and forearm, and he goes, You may cut me, monster, but you cannot turn me and you cannot kill me. And then this barbed wire motherfucker looks at him, he's like, Kill you? What a waste. And then you see the spiked I don't know what that voice was, I'm sorry. <laughs> the spiked individual like throws a spike right through Thor's head, like, like a railroad sized spike pierced out like inches in the front inches in the back insane right through his helmet and they go we want to keep you and then everyone's on the down everyone's fucked up everyone's knocked down t'challa says city prepare to dimensional shift but the city is being fucked up by the barbed wire this uh guy he's like spreading his wires all into the the living city which has a thoughts emotions it can feel and it's interesting because they do an emergency evac and they evacuate Sam Wilson out of there while everyone is knocked down. And you see Sam go, T'Challa! And then he's uh, him, I believe. Sam, uh, Captain Marvel, Iron Man, and Vision are all teleported out. And the ones that are knocked out are Scarlet Witch, Thor, and T'Challa. So we got those three Avengers down. I hope they'll be okay. They look really fucked up. But, uh, ah, like the bad guy yells. And we cut back to Becker Street. Sun death hour, almost 30 minutes in. Becker Street is where the Sanctum Sanctorum is. So Doctor Strange is there. And we see someone walking towards it. And we get a, a look inside. And we see Clea and Doctor Strange. If you don't know, Clea is Doctor Strange's wife. She briefly took the mantle when he was temporarily dead. But it's comic, so nobody can ever stay dead for too long. But she goes, Stephen, my love, we need to be out there. And Stephen goes, I know, Clea, but if we can assemble the Montesi formula, then this all ends immediately. And you see there, he's floating and they're like looking at different spell books. And there's potions and everything flying around. Very Doctor Strange. And then Blade enters and he goes, a spell to kill every vampire on Earth. Good trick, Doc. And they kind of have a banter here and there. And it's like, Blade, like, what's going on? What's happening? You're the vampire person. Thank God you're here. Explain. Please give us what's going on. And Blade goes, a vampire uprising. But you knew that. They call themselves the Structure, a vampire cult that was spread across the world before Moon Knight killed their leader. But they found a new leader, one with a plan. And of course, there's a reference here uh, in Moon Knight 18, which is the editor's note to like let you know. If you want to find out more about that, you can go back to those issues and figure it out. But you see Blade continues to uh, give us some information. He says, one, using Andaluvian Atlantean rituals to detonate dark force use and turn them into portals to block out the sun. Two, global uprisings, mobilizing legions of mass-turned maniacs all across the globe, striking at population centers, critical infrastructure, the like. And three, taking out the Avengers. And uh, it's a kill squad. And he says, the Blood Coven are a match for the Avengers. Believe me. There's this panel where he's looking so intense. Like, there's a page at, at the top of the panel. And he looks so intense. And he looks so good. And I'm reminded of how amazing this art is. Because Blade just looks so fantastic. I love this panel. But uh, you see that he's looking at this book. And he's like, oh, like, you're willing to... To kill all vampires, even the ones on your side. And Doctor Strange is like, I'm a I'm a doctor. If I have to cut off an arm to save the, the whole body, I will. That's my philosophy here. Which is interesting because I want to know for Doctor Strange fans if this is char if this is proper characterization for him, because I know he did die. Clea took over. And then is this a new version of Doctor Strange? Like I am for the for the purposes of this story, this works. I just was curious if this is accurate for how he's being portrayed recently but that's beyond the scope of this comic <laughs> but um dr strange looks back and he's just like you mentioned a new leader for this structure who is it mastermind is it dracula and blade goes no nothing like that do you want to know who put out the sun who released the children of the night who assembled the monsters who killed the avengers the leader of the structure it's me and then he stabs dr strange in the back with a blade and the blade pierces out and he's like oh and it's so good and this is earlier i was so relieved i was like okay blade can figure this shit out he's got this but now it's like no blade what happened are you being mind controlled are you did he finally get fed up 
Was he just like, I'm tired of being a hero. I'm just going to be a fucking vampire. I don't know, but I'm incredibly intrigued. And that is the end of issue one of five. Very exciting. I am, I'm, I'm the type of guy that if I am so intrigued by a series to collect it weekly, I will. But if I'm just semi intrigued, I usually wait for the trade paperback. And part of me wondered if this was a trade paperback moment just to wait for it all to be collected. But I'm kind of feeling like this is this is, seems interesting enough for me to uh, grab it week by week. And there, so I, I think I would be doing that. But there are a bunch of tie-ins coming. I know there's like X-Men tie-ins. There's other Avengers characters. I'm very excited for um, Psylocke Kanan, uh, Canon. She's getting her own little thing. I think her and Greg Crow. I really love Canon. Uh, she and Betsy had such interesting directions during the Crow Cohen age, and I I really like that character, so I'm going to probably pick up that one shot. But yeah, what you guys think? Did you read the issue? Did you follow along with me? Are you intrigued by this concept, Blade gone bad and the vampires attacking? Or are you just kind of, I'm not in the mood for events, I'm not really feeling it, so uh, let me know what you guys think. If you want to listen to more of this, you can subscribe to the channel and look at all my other videos where I invite friends to talk about comics. But if you want more of me, you can go to my TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and letterbox at Noah is Garcia. If you want to check out my photography, you can go to Noah Garcia underscore photography at Instagram.com. I think that's my blog. <laughs> If you want to check out my photography, you can go to Noah. Un Gar if you want to check out my photography, you can go to Noah Garcia underscore photography on Instagram. And thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.